Libra, it's Aces Week, baby. What's up? What's going on? Aces reading, perfect time of the year to do so as we just entered spring. Any new season, for that matter, and then also, of course, the new year. Great time to do an Aces check, so let's talk about it. We're going to do a deep look at the Ace of Swords, Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups, and the Ace of Pentacles. And so we're all on the same page. Let's go over Aces and what they mean, okay? So more often than not, when people see Aces, they're like, ah, new opportunity, cool. That's the one I'm making for myself, or hey, it's coming towards me. Awesome. Surf's up, right? And then there's the second type, which is actually the most common, and that is renewed ace. Stuff we already have in play in our lives, and we keep it going ideally because it's working for us in some way. And if not, we want to know that too. That way, if we can modify the ace, that way we have reason to renew it with confidence. Awesome. Anything from our time, energy, effort, feeling, passion, that kind of thing. And if not, perhaps we should scrap it and really make way for a new opportunity. There you go. So I should see a mix of both, new as well as renewed. Yes, let's get it going. We're going to start with the Ace of Swords. But like always, take a resonate, see what does not. These are general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate at all. And as frustrating as that is, it's also very normal. Collective readings, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what you do. You're going to check your other placements. You will find yourself in there somewhere. We're going to start with the Ace of Swords. Any brand new sharp thoughts and therefore actions because we understand it's the truth or an ongoing truth. It's just as strong as it ever was and therefore we still act on it. All right. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I just remember. I was suddenly excited for tonight. I just remembered. Yay. It's Shogun tonight. And I'm also making chicken carbonara. Yes. Two for high five. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be a good night. Oh, good food and a great show. I don't watch too much TV anymore, but when I do, it's good stuff. I am so into Shogun. It is so good. Oh, my God. It The, the quality is amazing the dedication to culture language everything oh my gosh so good oh my goodness ace of swords anyway that's me that's me geeking out but you know that mo it's kind of like uh when you remember your plans for later it's kind of like finding a 20 dollar bill in your pocket you're like oh heck yeah <laughs> that's good that's a good moment i like that what's going on it's the little things, guys. It's the little things, you know? Ace of Swords. Some of the Ace of Swords, please. Some of the Ace of Swords, please. Some of the Ace of Swords. Little Vino, you know. Some of the Ace of Swords, please. For La La Libra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put in the comments if you knew what I was doing there. <laughs> Let's do the Ace of Swords, please. Some of the Ace of Swords. Some of the Ace of Swords. Some of the... Ace of Swords. I really, really bless you. It's not a fault on the collective. I'm very happy for the Libra Collective, but I kind of want to get past that beautiful reconnection I've been seeing for you guys for a couple months now. Let's see some other things. Queen of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords, the Ten of Cups. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. You've been leaning away from your Ten of Cups recently. What's going on? leaning away you've been focusing on yourself a little more queen of pentacles people can kind of solve their own problems right now trying to pull back from the ten of cups a little bit some sort of emotional dynamic okay with persons of importance in your life and you're saying seven swords you've been kind of not completely exiting the ten of cups just kind of like leaning out of it <laughs> a little bit queen of pentacles what's up what's going on are you just now kind of saying this? This is fairly recent for you. What's going on? That's okay. I wanted to see a different. Difference is here. Let's take a look. What's going on? Two of Swords, Eight of Wands, the Four of Cups, I see. Okay, so you're doing a little bit of isolating recently. It looks like it's really, really fresh. So that's a new Ace of Swords. It doesn't seem like something that you're familiar with right now. You're still trying to catch up to what you're doing and or experiencing. So you haven't realized the full weight of this thought yet. So therefore, never mind talking about action. No. You, you're confused by it too. Okay. You're upset and you don't seem to understand why. So you're kind of leaning away from emotional dynamics right now. It's like, you know what? I just... Mm. It's not that your family and friends aren't important to you. You're kind of saying, I, I don't feel so good right now. Queen of Pentacles, you feel a little down. 
And it's hard for you to put your finger on why. Two of swords, eight of wands, four of cups. It's like you're expecting communication that won't come through. And it disappoints you, I think. Or what it is you're receiving, even if it is coming through, it's not what you want. It's... It's like you get emails, but they're the wrong emails. See what I'm saying? They're like, they're phone calls, but they're not the right phone calls. See what I'm saying? And there's something about that, that even though that's that's been going on for a while, it's kind of catching up to you now in terms of that sense of disappointment is catching up to you. You're, you're a little more mentally aware of it. And... As much as I think you love your family and friends, and I'm sure you do, because the Queen of Pentacles is here. Ultimately, that Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles, they're both nurturing by nature. And you're like, I can't. It's like you're saying, I want to be nurtured, just I want to be loved. I want to be part of something loving and nurturing, just not with that. It's, you're, you're aching for something. You're aching for something that's not coming through. And that's where you want the real nurturing and love and compassion to come from. Not family, not friends. So while it's there for you, and I'm glad it's there for you, we should all be so. We should all be so um, grateful in this life to have a ten of cups, whatever form it takes, family, friends, kids, whatever, whatever it is, spouses, whatever it is. But there's something here that says it's just, it's not the right kind of support right now. You want something to come through, but you're always disappointed, and you you're saying you don't know what you're looking for. I disagree. You expect communication, that's a constant. But it's never the right one. What are you looking for? What is it? You're saying, I don't know, two of swords, I don't know. I just find everything I, and everyone I talk to disappointing. It's <laughs> the way you're leaning away from the kind of family circle there suggests it's, it's not the boat that you want to be in. It's not that it's wrong. It's not that it's faulty. It's, it's not there's anything bad with it. It's just not the source or wellspring for your affection that you want it to come from. So where do you want it to come from? If, if you're getting nothing but the wrong kind of emails, the wrong kind of phone calls, what kind of emails or phone calls are you looking for and from whom? It's okay. Let's have a talk. Let's have a real talk. I feel like we haven't had a real talk in a while. You know? That's why I'm here. Let's do the Ace of Wands. Let's see what lights you up. Let's see the Ace of Wands, please. Show me the Ace of Wands. Show me the Ace of Wands. Show me the Ace of Wands. Show me what your passions are, honey. You tell me. I don't care. You tell me. You don't just go in the moon. Go over the moon. I don't care. Just what's going on. Where's your hope? Where's your spark? Where's your challenge? Where's your pride? Where's your passion? All those things. Creativity. Everything. That Ace of Wands contains so much, guys. I hate it when people just limit it to passion. I like passion as in sex, not passion as in life comprehensively. All those things contain passion. Everything from pride to being curious is in the Ace of Wands. It's a beautiful element. And I wish people would see it for what it is more. You know what I mean? Let's see the Ace of Wands. And if I can see it for you, I might be able to help point you in the right direction. Eight of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, the Ace of Wands. Oh, yes. Eight of Pentacles. You're good at your craft. Let's go ahead and say that right now. Whatever it is that you do, you do it well. You're a good worker. You're stable. You have practical, functionary skills that you're actually quite good at. That, you say, is a given to you. But time has passed, and you still would seek inspiration of outside of your work. You're saying there's more to life than work. Oh, I completely agree, 1,000%. <laughs> I completely agree. It's Don't get me wrong. People who are really in tune with their work or their career, it shows. You can't fake it, right? You either show up and you're fully present or you're not. You're saying at work, you're fully present. You're good at it. You like it a lot. And I'm glad. But time has passed, and you still find yourself aching for more. You would still have inspiration in you that has nothing to do with the coin you earn or your practice skill set. A lot of people experience pride just for showcasing their skills every day. And I love that. When you see that in somebody, you smile because you're like, damn, they're good at what they do. 
And it may not be the most brilliant thing. Like, for instance, I went to a coffee house not too long ago, and it's full of employees that you know they're, they're there. They're doing their job. They're pushing buttons. They're serving. That's it. There was one guy there killing it. He's killing it. Whereas one person there might handle one person at a time. This guy is knocking out five, six, seven orders. And he's talking. He's communicating. He's smiling. He's said, that's the difference between someone who has pride in their skills and someone who shows up to work. So I know that you have pride in your skills, but you're still wanting something more, you know? And by the way, when you see something like that, it shows I tipped that guy an extra five bucks. And I said, you're just because you're awesome. And he just the biggest smile on his face because he knows he knows he knows he's different from the other 20 people working there. He knows. Um, so I know that you like what you do, but you still want more. I know I've seen the longing. I like it when I get to have these little conversations with the collectives, you know? That means it's a little bit more on the personal level. A little bit more relaxed. Shoot for the moon, honey. Tell me what do you want. I'm going to keep asking you. You'll eventually point it out to me. Whether you mean to or not. Knight of Pentacles. The world. Six of Pentacles. Ah. There's something here you would love to give up. There's something here about the practicality, the everyday function. You're saying you could do without it. If it meant you could have something. I talk about new all the time. People say, I want new, I know, I know. And then they make no space for it. None. They'll make zero fucking space for new. And then they wonder why they don't have any room for new. You're saying you would gladly set some stuff aside if you could have that thing that you ache for. There's some things you just don't want to bother with anymore. It's tedious. Some portions of your life clearly light you up and you want to keep it going. But you're also saying there's more to life than practical balances. You still are seeking inspiration. But there's a balance here that you would love to give up if it means you, you could have new. So what is it? I'm not making this up, guys. I see the dissonance in you. I see the craving. I see the longing. I see your willingness to let go of shit that is okay. It's practical. They're saying you could do without it. What's that one thing you're aching for? Is it new work? I'm not convinced of that. You're so good at what you do. That, that practical balance could be anything, guys. Anything in your day-to-day -day life or reality. You say you could gladly give, gladly give up portions of it if it meant that you were inspired again and feeling strongly in something. What is this? I see that Ace of Cups. I see that Ace of Cups. Any new love here? Renewed love? What's going on? Or also, of course, just love of the self, too. That's a classic. That will never go out of style. Love of the self, you know? Let's see that Ace of Cups, please. Some of the Ace of Cups, some of the Ace of Cups, some of the Ace of Cups, some of the Ace of Cups. Six of Wands, Four Cups, Three of Wands. God, what is that ache? You ache for something that seems like it's far away from you. It keeps pulling on you and pulling on you. It's this constant disappointment. You're aching for something that seems like it's far away from you, but The idea of it makes you feel good, Six of Wands. You're saying you can't engage with it, or that it's so far away from you. What you desire and would open up towards feels so far away from you. I, I know the leaning away from the family and friends thing, I get that. 
especially if your heart's pulling in another direction that has nothing to do with that. And it's, like I said, it's not the support you want. It's not the function you want. It's not the love you want. And it's not that you don't care about it. Of course you do. It's saying, but it's not nurturing me. You're looking for something. You're looking for something. You're aching for something. It's almost like you're saying I would give some things up in my life just to have this. What is it? You're looking out there on the horizon. What are you looking for? Every phone call is the wrong phone call. Every email is the wrong email. Every text is the wrong text. It's... Where do you want it to come from? Or like I said, who? You may not know. Or perhaps you do. King of Wands, Six of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords. <sighs> that Six of Pentacles you said you would give up, you're saying you can't or you won't because whatever it is you're longing for isn't right there in front of you. So I see you continuing to placate energies that are already pre-existing longing for something else. You said you would gladly give up the Six of Pentacles that you don't. You show up for it, but it's not what you want. And I keep asking you, what do you want? You're missing something. I know you're missing something. You say, I, I don't know what it is. Yes, you do. What you're aching for has left such a large piece of you that it's visible. You're, you're just walking me around the empty space. You won't actually tell me what the empty space is. You're saying you would like to give up certain things if it meant you could have other things. So But what you're longing for doesn't seem to be a guarantee. And that's fine, there are no guarantees. But you also haven't showed me what it is you actually want, just what you're willing to give up if you could have it. But because it's not right there in front of you saying, I guess I can't have it, so I gotta keep on with what I got. Is that correct? Let's see the Ace of Pentacles, please. I'm getting a little frustrated with this one. I need to start seeing some results or I'm going to get really close to scrapping this one. I don't mind having a personal talk with you, but I also have to be in mind of my collectives who actually want to make decisions. Okay? I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. I want to work with people who are willing to look at themselves, ask the questions, and start answering them. I've asked you several times what it is you need. And you're like, I don't know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. If you're talking about this is what I'd be willing to give up gladly if it meant I could accommodate the space for it, I would. So that tells me you have to understand by some extent what it is you do want. You've shown me a lot of longing and desire and hope that something that seems to be far away from you, but you won't engage with it, even though you showed me a willingness to sacrifice other things in your life if it meant making space for it. So what is it you're hoping will just show up? Because if all this is true, I mean, mm, I'll finish that thought in a second. Hold on. Let's see this Ace of Pentacles, please. Ace of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Justice, you. Why is that so hard? Why was it so hard for you to say that? What you want is beautiful. Why, why did I have to keep poking you and poking you for you to finally tell me what you wanted? Ace of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, you, Justice. 
You want an investment in new love and you act like you don't know what that is. Yeah, you do. It just, it feels like it's out of your grasp or it's too far away or you don't know what it looks like. But then I haven't seen you make strides towards it, just your willingness to sacrifice if it meant having it. But there's been no steps outside of this to obtain this. You want balanced, stable, high-functioning love and the reality to back it up. That's beautiful. It's healthy, and it's correct for you. So what are you doing to achieve it? Are you manifesting? Are you healing yourselves towards this? In other words, making sure that you're in good order for this? I, I don't see manifestation or healing. I just kind of a passive acceptance that it's not right in front of me. So you have an idea of what it is you would sacrifice, but because whatever this is isn't immediately in front of your face, you're saying, I've just got to keep going along with whatever I got in place, whatever those balances are to you. Yeah, the Wheel of Fortune, Knight of Pentacles, the Hermit, Why does so much time have to pass before you see it? That's further out. That's much further out than what I'm doing today. The Wheel of Fortune, Knight of Pentacles, the Hermit. In time, you will see this for yourself. And heal yourself towards that path. That's what I was looking for. Some sort of consolidation of self that's saying, yes, this is me. This is where I want to be. But we're nowhere near it. Three quarters of the reading, I'm wondering if I just need to let this one go. Because I saw no consolidation of thoughts, actions, feelings, or beliefs that any of this is possible. Right up there until the Ace of Pentacles, where it got real. But even then, that has a serious component of, but I'm not consolidated towards it yet, with the Hermit. In other words, knowing absolutely that that's where you want to go. So you're back here, way back here in the beginning stages of understanding that you're dissatisfied and you don't understand why. That you're longing for something or someone but you still insist you don't know what that is. That you feel dissatisfied in whatever it is you're currently in because it's not what you want. I see that work fulfills you in many ways, but not like that. That you would still long for more. And you even have an idea of what you would sacrifice or let go of if what you wanted just kind of showed up. Okay, that's, that's what you call wishful thinking, not, not manifestation. But in the interim of that thing just not showing up, you still feel like you're waiting for something that you can't identify. And so you keep those balances in place, the same ones you say you would scrap tomorrow if something just kind of showed up. And then I get over here where reality meets our truer self, literally you, there with justice. Ace of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, you actually do want new love, but based in reality, foundation, fair. The Wheel of Fortune, Knights of Pentacles, the Hermit, and there with time, the actual commitment to the path of that, walking it, actually taking steps to that direction. What's going on? I know this. When you start to take yourself seriously, the universe does too. And for now, all I see is longing without a willingness on your part to commit to that longing and understanding it. Which is really dragging this out. I start to see development real development with the insight over time that you're headed in this direction you have been for a long time.
Yeah, there's no movement. Six of Swords is in reverse. We're not mentally committed to this at all. So here we have the me mental commitment to move on, move forward, do something, anything. Leave something else behind in order to find calmer waters or any kind of waters that we are better suited to us. Here is no. There's no mental commitment to this. None, no dedication to move forward, to move on. Six of Swords in reverse. But it also feels like you're not moving because that's technically true. The lovers. King of Swords. Two of Pentacles. Eight of Cups. Queen of Wands. You said they walked away from you. And that they seem to be fine. No new insight on that person. Hanged man's in reverse. Let's take them out of the equation. Okay. No disrespect to that energy, but let's take them out of the equation. Let's talk about you. Six of swords in reverse. There's been no movement since we've had a lover's connection. That's the one I was looking for. The one that you're longing for. Why all the phone calls you get are the wrong ones. All the emails you get are the wrong emails text messages etc it's because it's not from that person king of swords two of pentacles um you're saying they walked or moved on and that you didn't and by that i mean mentally and spiritually it's not an accusation at all it's not i'm just looking at where you are that's what i do i read the cards i read what's here not what isn't that's it if you're offended by this, it's either A, it's true and you don't want it to be, or B, you can't relate, in which case, I, like I said at the opening, check your placements. I'm actually having a real talk with Libra today. Okay? We haven't quite gotten over this, the impact of it, the lovers. It's a complicated, if that helps you. It's been a minute since I think I said this to you. It's a multi-layered bonding system, which means not easy. It's not going to be like a three of cups or a page that you just met the other day. The lovers is a multi-layered bonding system, and if we don't know what to do, in other words, choose it, it will not choose us back, okay? So that's a mental thing, it's a spiritual thing, it's an emotional thing, it's a physical thing, it's the whole thing. You're saying it came down to a physical thing and also a mental thing, maybe. Mentally choosing this, and then also how to physically make that happen in the real world was always a difficult thing for you. Perhaps emotionally you accepted the connection as being impactful to you, okay? And maybe spiritually. But mentally, we didn't quite know how to wrap our mind around this. Never mind showcase what it meant to us in the real world. And while it might seem easy for them that they moved on, you can't assume that. Typically, with the lover's connection, what you experienced, they experienced in some way. It doesn't matter if you're the one who did the leaving or got left. Regardless, it hurts. You just don't see their side of the story. Why would you? You're not connected. Not anymore. But the essence of it lingers because it's powerful, right? That's enough to drive anybody crazy. And it's enough to put anyone in a position of always feeling like they're waiting for something that just doesn't quite come through, right? I know. And that's why all the wrong phone calls are the wrong phone calls, so on and so forth. That's why I see you leaning away from family and friends because it doesn't fit the way you need it. Guys, I'm not really here to talk about what went down, that's a yours and theirs type of thing. And I really don't want a them or they to take over this reading. I'm just seeing your reaction to it and how you feel like you've been kind of stuck ever since. Neither moving on or moving forward. Just a longing. A burning where that hole is, and you walked me all around the hole before you got to the heart of it. I know what you would like to do. And I, I thought I was going to see some progress there when you said this is what I'm willing to give up if it means I get something. Do they know that? 
I don't think they do, because you don't. Everything begins with self. You show me what you're willing to do, but you haven't actually walked the path to consolidate yourself towards it in terms of movement. Big difference between what we feel we would do and versus what we would actually do. You're telling me this is what I feel I would do if it kind of showed back up. I would make space for it this time. I would. But I don't see the steps for it. Not till later. When you actually know that that's the path you want to take. Not to be a passive recipient, but to be an active participant. I can't tell you what to do. You have to figure these things out for yourself, consolidate yourself towards it, and it's either your truth or it's not your truth. It is that simple. So I'm not really interested in the backstory. I'm not. I'm interested about you and this point forward. I'm invested in getting people unstuck. I'm getting or want to get people out of this place of there's nothing I can do and I'm miserable and I don't. I want people to get out of that and take fuller possession of the self just like you do right there towards the end. The only reason I was concerned is because up until that point, I saw no healing for you, no solid truths, no actions, just all hypothetical. This is what I would do if it showed back up. If it showed back up, this is what I'd do this time. I'd let these things go and I'd give more time to this. I would. So that means you have a willingness to try. Because we can't always bank on these connections just showing up at our front door hoping this time we'll get a second or third chance. Sometimes we have to create that chance ourselves. For months, 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 I've been seeing a lover or a soul bond come back to you. And now I'm seeing you understanding that you might have to go to it. So we're having a little bit of role reversal this time. It tells me you two might have oppositional lead replacements <laughs> if what I'm saying here is true. The past several months, I think that was that Libra story. This Libra story says it's going to be on me. I just, I don't know that yet. And that does not mean I'm assigning blame or judgment or fault. Are you listening? I am not assigning judgment, blame, or fault or saying this is a responsibility. I'm saying this is the energy you've presented to me today and how you fucking hate it. You hate the helplessness. You hate the feeling that there's nothing you can do. And yet you told me simultaneously what you could do if it just showed back up. This sense of waiting for the heart to return is exhausting you. When you, finally, your, yourself right here, is ready to make the investment from the heart, knowing that it's solid and consolidated, consistent. You will see how you were likely always headed in that direction, but you needed a hell of a warm-up act before you got there. Okay? And by the time you get here, it may not be the lover. It might be someone else all together brand new. You just may not know it yet. You have to dedicate yourself to the path in order to see these things. Okay? It seems like, I know, probably from your perspective, if you check on them a time to time, it might seem like they got it all worked out. They got it all figured out. No more perspective needed, but they got their shit sorted. I promise you. They feel it in their own way. I'm just not doing a they today. It's just, this is the one kind of dimensional perspective you have of them as being an outsider looking in. Okay? They might be fucking devastated for all you know. It's no easy way to walk away from a lover. Do you have any idea how hard that is? I've done it once and that's enough for me. I'll never want to do it again. 
ever been in that position, you never want to do it again. It's fucking exhausting. Don't take for granted that everything is well with that person. If you were deeply affected, so were they. That's how the lovers work. Okay. Like always, I want what's best for you. This one's going to go over like a lead balloon. I know. The only reason I'm keeping it, I made that decision about five minutes ago. <laughs> That's how close these things are for me. I'm making that decision. Because when the time is right for you to understand your path, it'll be a glorious day. I'm only sorry that you had to go through this much crap before you get there. But when you do, When you own your truth, when you own that Ace of Wands, which is a renewal ace at this point, in case I didn't make that clear, which would be a renewed cup, but stronger, much stronger, with your stamp on it. Oh, that'll be a wonderful day. Full ownership. But until then, this one's going to take a lot of hits. That's okay. <laughs> Tara's not a popularity contest. I know. I know. I know. There's the lover under the deck. Tulips and the Lenormand is the lovers. The male. The male who has the romance in his heart because he bears the rose. It's more than a wand. It suggests love. The opening of it. Wanting. Sitting, waiting. I oh, know. The phone calls that are not the right ones. The emails that are not the right... What about emails? <laughs> I don't... You walk barefoot in the house. Uh, something about your feet? Are we, are we self-conscious about our feet? They have big feet? I don't know what's going on there, guys. I have no idea. For some of you, number 28 is important. Toil and labor. I know, your work's important to you. But it can't sustain all the best of your best energy. Even if you do have a good point of view about work, and it seems like you do. Courtship, toil and labor. It was hard. It was hard to put work into this. I don't know why, but it, it was hard... It was hard to give this structure, this courtship. There was some sort of relationship here, I know. And it did feel courting, like we were dating. A little bit of luck. A little bit of luck before leaf clover. Number two, and then also the sky bridge. Distance. Seems like your distance, your luck is, you don't have any luck, that's not true. There's something else about the rising high so you can kind of see what's going on. And a little bit of distance might actually add to your luck later. Perhaps we couldn't see the luck when it was right in front of us. We needed to be distanced from it in order to understand that perhaps this was for the best. We just can't see the results of it yet. It's kind of what I saw there towards the end, you know? Home. Place of home is our sanctuary. Number four. <laughs> That's cute. Home. For, for April, for some of you, is important. Um, no, it's, it had a sense of warmth. We... we <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from. We have this impression that somebody's home is, is warm, cute, cozy, like a little cottage or a fairy cottage. Or we, we, we imagine what it's like. It's like fantastical. It's like a fantastical home uh, that is well-maintained, that it's very cute, and there's something magical about it. <laughs> I don't know why it looks so... It's like I never noticed like a fairy house. I bet they have a magical house, a fairy house, something like that. Uh, it's associated with a kind of cottage cuteness, well-maintained. Um, it has personality, something like that. I never got to see their home.
I never got to see their home, but you have an idea of what it would look like or the impression or the feeling or the vibe? The feminine. There's something mysterious about that energy. I know, I saw it over here. The feminine. Busy, distracted, they don't see me anymore. They're preoccupied with other things. That's a false belief, guys. It's a false belief, I promise. Oh, uh, Busy, distracted, they don't think about me anymore. They don't intuit me anymore. That's not true. It's a false belief. Like I said, the lover's connection is not usually parted. Even if they make it look easy, that's just your perspective. Okay. Um, no. Are they water oriented? I just. Is that Ace of Cups? Water. Doesn't have to be, but it just kind of feels like that. The third eye. Trust in divine timing. Yeah. Clarity. Getting clarity, trying to listen to the spirits, watching tarot, trying to get an idea, gain clarity about the third eye. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling it? Trying to trying to find answers. I know there's something here. I'm not suggesting waiting. Divine timing should not be misconstrued with waiting. I'm saying you will understand things and gain clarity with time. Sometimes the process is the process. Toxicity bound to patterns for some of you. Fear. Wrong choices. Did I make the wrong choice? And if this was a toxic pattern, then how come I still long for it? Or is that a toxic pattern in and of itself? <clears throat> well, something is either a toxic pattern or it's not. That looks pretty damned healthy to me. But sometimes it takes an upset to understand that maybe that's why the process is kind of taking a long time. Things to think about. Oh, God. I did it again. Of course I did. <laughs> Oops, I did it. What a ridiculous song. It's cute, though. Don't get me wrong. Ah, for the Britney Spears people. Da, 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 da. Okay? Look. <laughs> she's just I okay look I'm not saying I'm just saying I get it I'm not everyone's cup of tea she's not everyone's cup of tea it's catchy okay it's a catchy tune I'll give it that <laughs> uh it's a catchy tune <laughs> no but I don't think this represents a toxic pattern I think your reaction to it if you thought that it was if this was a toxic connection I can see why with all those un solved questions and things like that you're gonna you're gonna question yourself why am i holding on to this why do i still ache for it why do i still yearn for it does that mean it's bad or it's toxic does this represent a, a, a another picture of a bigger problem the outcome would suggest no and that's why we need time to reflect about our pathways what we choose and why this is based on experience. Not just the accumulation of negative impressions or negative feeling. It requires real processing. To know the difference between something that's not good for us but we yearn for it and something that we very much want and yearn for it because it's correct. That's where time needs to take effect here, I think, for you and why it's so extended. Speaking of which, oh, it is what it is. It's yours is the last of the day. People are gonna bitch no matter what I do, honey. Too short, too long. You must like Libra because theirs is 45 minutes. Okay, whatever you need to believe. All right, yeah, there's something there. I did see four a couple of times, April. Something might be shifting for you in April. I don't quite know, but it's there, okay? For others of you, December, Last December might have been important. So coming December, dusk. Anything else here, please? For others of you, within 10 years.
How long have you known this person? Oh, it's an age difference. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's an age difference. I forget, that's a very old poetic uh, way of describing age differences in, in literature uh, that just popped into my head. I don't know. Uh, when December meets April, something like that, the idea is the time of winter, age, maturity, weathering, okay, versus the newness and freshness of spring, which is March, April, May, 10 years. Is there a 10-year difference between you two? To somebody somewhere that's confirmation. It's not, it has nothing to do with about time checks, but a timeline. Oh... Things just got real interesting. God dang it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I just hit something. I just hit. God dang it. Why did the 11th hour? Why? Oh. Oh, there's some good stuff that kicked in. Oh, I'm so, I'm, I'm a little pissed. I'm a little pissed. I'm a little pissed. That's an age difference, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I know. Well, here's the thing, guys, with the lovers, soul bond connectivity, higher level stuff uh, goes beyond your basic connections, goes beyond a page meets a page or a night meets a night, right? I don't care. Whatever it is, what it is. Time is time. I don't care. All right. So the thing with that, this does not care about what you look like. It does not care about your background in terms of age, race, ethnicity, language, culture, because what's shared between the two is of more value than the surface appearance, okay? And that includes all the demographics that surround it. In other words, the lover's connection doesn't often make sense on outward appearance. It's not supposed to. It connects where it's supposed to in the right ways. You are both meant to learn something. What it is you mirror in each other is what counts. Your strengths, your weaknesses, okay? All that good stuff, which means it creates that push and pull dynamic. I want to pull you towards me. I want to push you away because I see the best of myself in you and I also see the worst and it creates fears which means it creates that challenge dynamic to overcome those fears to reach for our lover but that means we have to get confrontational with ourselves okay all that stuff that's why I'm saying for somebody here that age point might have been an imperative or it might have impeded progress and it's like I'm seeing toxicity bound patterns. I'm old enough. I shouldn't be doing any of this. This is nonsense. This is blah. This is something I used to mess around with when I was 20 and I don't care who I did da, da, da. Oh, I'm too old for that. Whatever. It, it's, it goes beyond that. I know I'm doing it. That's because I'm really pushing the time frame here. So I'm, I can't give it the full weight of justice that it needs. I'm just telling you this is not. <laughs> You, you've either known this person for over 10 years, yeah, okay, and we racked it up to too much of an age difference then, <laughs> and that, that tune hasn't changed. So what are we bound to here in terms of toxic patterns? This is too different for me. I'm too different from it. I'm still attracted to it, and I don't know why, but I got to keep longing for it, even though I know I'm not going to accept it. We need to change that. That's the real toxic pattern here. That's for some of you. God dang it. I wish I had more time. Oh, this one's crazy. This one's all over the place. I'm sorry about that. But, you know, we don't see the real meat and potatoes till the 11th hour. That's what happens. How many times did I have to push you before you finally ponied up the goods? Stubborn you are. I'm guessing you hear that word a bit. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. I want to understand. So that's what I'm saying. That that desire to still connect to this, that empty place in you that feels empty and longs, it's going to defy time and it's going to defy age and anything else that's in there that's different between you and them. It's going to stand. You're always going to feel it in some way. The question is, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to learn about it? about yourself, the situation, does it apply to you? Can you let it go? 
Can you let it go? Because that'll take time too. Can you accept it? Because that's going to take time too. So use your time wisely. Okay. Anyway, I, I despite all the nonsense, honey, I do hope, truly, genuinely, I do hope this helped you in some way. I really do. I wish I had more time to cover it. I do. Put in the comments. You know, if you're saying full of it, Christina, then feel free to put that in there too. Uh, like I said, I hope it helped you though. Take care. Be well.